Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and we are graphing inequalities! Ooh, yeah! Gonna be great fun. Alright, so what to expect? We are going to shade in the spaces after graphing a line. That's basically what we're going to be doing, followed by, as always, a whole bunch of practice. Alright, let's first off graph some lines, and then we'll start doing the shading that's involved with inequalities. The slope of a line, the, for me, the, the easiest way to write that um, equation is the slope-intercept form, which is right here, where you have y equals a number times x plus another number. So, what do those numbers mean? Well, when you have um, an equation written in this format, the first um, thing that we can use to graph a line is this number. That is my y-intercept. That's the place where the line crosses the y-axis. So that point right there. The other number, in this case the number 2, indicates the slope. So I'm going to add a slope of 2, or in other words, 2 over 1. A rise of 2 and a run of 1. It goes up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, and I can put a point there. Now I have two points and I can draw a line. So those are the two pieces of information that help me be able to graph a line using this equation. I can use my in y-intercept and then my slope. I'm going, you know, whatever my slope is. So I'd like you to go ahead and try this one out. Go graph that line. y equals x minus 2. You can pause the video, try it out. Where's the y-intercept going to go? That's the first piece of information. The y-intercept is always this second number, or the number after the x. In this case, it's negative 2. So I'm going to have a point right there at negative 2. The next number is this. Now, this one's a little bit tricky because there's no number in front of x. And when you don't have a number in front of x, that means your slope is 1. 1 times x is x. So I'm going to have a slope of 1. In other words, I go up 1 over 1. And I can put a second point there and then draw my new line. So this green line is a representation of that equation, y equals x minus 2. Our third equation, y equals negative 2x, is a little bit tricky because of the, the pieces of information that we are given. First off, it's hard to figure out where the y-intercept is located. I'm going to give you a bit of a hint, though. It's right here. And the reason why the y-intercept is right there is because it's kind of like you're adding 0. Negative 2x plus 0 would just be negative 2x. So if you're seeing a blank on the end here, and you don't know what the y-intercept is because there's no number listed there, that's because it's 0. And that means that the y-intercept is right at the origin, the point 0, 0. The next piece of information that we do have clearly listed there is that our slope is negative 2, meaning the rise is minus 2, where it goes down 2 and over 1. Over 1, down 2. And then we can put our second point there, draw a line through, and that is our line. The tricky part for this one, of course, being that the, the line travels through the origin um, at the point 0, 0. So there's no y-intercept listed there. So that's just a couple of tricks on graphing lines. Now we're going to change gears a little bit and talk about graphing inequalities. Usually with this type of question, um, you'll be given, especially if it's a multiple choice, you'll be given a graph and an inequality. And I'm going to just tell you a couple of things to look for with this. Things to look for. One, the y-intercept. Just like before, you want to look for the y-intercept. If it matches that number at the end, great then that is one of the three things you need to look for. The second thing, just like before, is our slope. This one has negative x. That means it's negative 1x, or it's going down 1 over 1. That's our slope. 
right there. And the third thing to look for that's different on this than graphing a line is the shading. The shading is that triangle you see above the line. If it has a greater than symbol, you shade above the line. If it has a less than symbol, you shade below the line. And that's the three basic things to look for. One minor point here that may come up um, if you're, you're doing more in-depth lessons on this. Notice I have a dotted line there. It's a dotted line because this is a greater than symbol. If it was greater than or equal to, it would be a solid line. Similar to um, when you fill in the circles when you're graphing an inequality. But for all of the examples we use, I'm just going to use a dotted line and the greater than or less than symbol because this is the first lesson sort of introducing this topic. So let's go to what I said before. If you have three different equations and a graph, and your job is to match them, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at all those pieces of information that, um, that I talked about. I'm going to look at the y-intercept. I'm going to look at the slope. And I'm going to look at which side of the line is shaded. So first of all, my slope. Let's address that. All three of these equations have the same slope, negative 1 over 2, or negative 1 half. So that means the slope is the same for all of them, and that's the number right before the x is exactly the same in all of them. So that's not helpful to me. I have to look at what's different for all of them. And what's different here in this case is this is a 2, this is a 2, and this is a 1. That tells me my y-intercept is the thing that makes a difference with this graph. This graph crosses the line right here at the point 0, 1, which means my y-intercept is 1, and only one of those three inequalities has the 1 at the end. I can also look at shading. This is a less than symbol, which means I'm going to be shading below the line. But there's also a less than symbol up here, so that wouldn't be completely unique. This 1 is totally unique. The 1 is the, the thing there that makes it very different from everything else. I'm going to move the graph a little bit. I don't know if you see that. It shifted up a little bit. So now my y-intercept is at the point 2. That makes this one and this one have the correct y-intercept. This one is no longer um, in the running for which equation it is. So it's one of the first two equations. And I need to look at the shading. The shading is what gives it away between these two. It's the only thing that's different between them. The less than symbol says I shade everything that is less than that line or everything that is lower than that line. So I know that this one um, is the correct inequality because of the shading. Let's quickly um, move the shading to the top side there. That would be this inequality because the shading says it's greater than. All right, so we've seen a graph of all three of these inequalities. Y is less than 1 half x plus 2. Y is greater than 1 half x plus 2. And Y is less than 1 half x plus 1. Again, the key parts here, the shading and then the Y intercept. Those are things to look for. Now it's your turn. I want you to match the graph with these inequalities. Only one of these inequalities matches this graph. Pause the video, try and figure that out. Maybe even put your mouse over the inequality that you feel is the correct one. Hello, are you back? So looking at this, um, this is another situation where my y-intercept is right here at 0. My y-intercept is 0. With this one, my y-intercept would be 1, right? So that means I can eliminate this one. And that leaves me only my first and third inequality. One has a less than symbol. One has a greater than symbol. This one here is the correct answer. And the reason is that the shading is above the line. The shading is above the line. And you can pick that. Um, just pick any point on the line and go up, right? Oh, we're in the shaded region, right? So that is the solution, or that is the, the graph that matches the inequality. 
we do have our y-intercept at the point of zero, right? So that is a match as well. Couple of things to remember. If it's a greater than symbol, you're shading above the line. If it's a less than symbol, you're shading below the line. Other than that, you need to practice, practice, practice. I hope that lesson was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.